Hi, my dear friends. I hope that you're doing well and welcome back to Plants and Lucia. My name is Lucia and this plant right here is Hannah. And today we're going to talk about the beautiful coffee plant. Okay, coming up. Oh, before I forget, if you're watching this video in July of 2020, we're celebrating our first 10,000 subscribers. So we're doing a special giveaway. If you would like to participate, just watch this video right here. But now, let's get to our coffee plant. <laughs> As many of you may know, this beautiful plant is the source of one of the most popular beverages for breakfast. And that's of course coffee. But it can also be a beautiful, very easy to care for houseplant. The Coffea Arabica is one of 90 members of the Coffea genus. And it is believed that has been grown for coffee for at least 1000 years. Imagine that! After three or four years, your plant, if she's very happy, will flower. These flowers then will produce fruits. And these fruits will produce two seeds or beans, where we take our coffee from. In the wild, these plants can actually grow up to 15 feet. But if we have her in a pot, it will stay smaller. You can also prune your plant so it is more full. The leaves are beautiful, you guys. They have this very dark green and you can see the veins coming out of the center and they're super smooth. It's a beautiful plant and in my experience very easy to take care for. So now let's talk about how you can keep yours very happy at your house. In the wild, this beautiful plant actually grows at the side of tropical mountains, so they love humidity. In our case, we have our coffee plant with other tropical plants, and she seems to be very happy there because tropical plants help each other with humidity levels. If you feel that the air is too dry for her, you can place her on a humidity tray or close to a humidifier. They also like temperate temperatures. So I would say that you can put your plant in a room that is between 17 to 21 degrees Celsius. I have also read that hotter temperatures will accelerate the growth of our plant, but that we don't want to do this in the case that we're growing our plant for beans. If we're growing our plant for beans, we want the fruits to ripen at a slower, steadier pace. So then keep the temperature between 16 to 21 degrees Celsius. In the wild, these plants are actually covered by the shades of other trees. So they prefer bright but indirect sunlight. Avoid direct sunlight because it may actually brown and burn the leaves. In terms of water, this plant really loves water. In my experience, I usually water every week. And we want to keep the soil very moist but not wet. So in order to make sure that my plant needs water, I check the soil with my finger. I put my finger inside the soil until the second knuckle and if I feel that the soil is dry, then I water. Don't let the soil dry completely because I've seen at least with this plant, they really like the soil moist. But always try to keep the soil moist but not wet. One tip that I can give you is also the method of watering that I use. I love the bottom watering method because it really helps me get the water into the roots from below and then once I'm done, I let the water drain down through the drainage holes. That way I make sure that the soil is moist but not wet. In terms of potting mix, you want a rich potting mix that will retain moisture but also have good drainage. So for this plant, I actually use the recipe that I use for most of my tropical plants. So I add 7 parts of coconut coir, this is to retain the moisture, 2 parts of warm castings to give some nutrition to my plant, and of course 2 parts of perlite. This will actually add drainage, which is great and it helps us not to overwater our plant. This year we're actually fertilizing our plant pretty much every time we water, but this of course is because we're using an organic fertilizer. And organic fertilizers tend to be less concentrated than synthetic fertilizers. But of course, even if you're using an organic fertilizer, I strongly recommend that you read the instructions so you avoid overfeeding your plant. This is a fertilizing that I'm using this year and it has proven to be very good for my plants. I love it because it is vegan and organic. And pretty much I can use it every time I water during the growing season. 
Oh, and in the winter, remember to always cut back on fertilizing because your plant won't need it as she will go into dormancy. All parts of the coffee plant, but the coffee beans, are toxic to humans and animals. If consumed, this plant can actually cause diarrhea or vomiting. So just try to keep away from babies or animals so everyone is safe. Keep an eye on bugs as well. This plant may be attacked by spider mites, mealybugs or aphids. So just in case, as part of my weekly routine, I always check the leaves and the soil and I always clean the leaves. This will also make our plants very happy. Okay my friends, these are some of the tips that I can give you about this beautiful plant. Do you have a coffee plant at home? How do you take care of it? Make sure to comment below so we can all learn together. Of course, if you would like to be part of this community, you're always welcome. So make sure to subscribe so we can see each other every week and talk about plants. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Okay, ciao! <laughs>